everybody. My name is Key, aka Ordinary Beauty 07, which is my YouTube channel. The reason why I'm ordinary and beautiful is because Christ allows me to be beautiful. I'm ordinary without him and the number seven because it is God's number. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk to you about my rapture dream that I just recently had. And I've had several, so I will. I'll start off with the one that I most recently had, and then I'll backtrack later in other videos to let you know what happened in those. Um, I have been a follower of Christ since I was six years old. I um, was baptized twice because I wanted to. The last time I was uh, baptized as a child, um, about the age of, I would say, about 10. And then I wanted to do it later because I kind of fought when I went down <laughs> and I wanted to do it again as an adult. So I decided to do it again about three years ago. So anyway, that was just something I wanted to personally do. Uh, I uh, have the gift of speaking in tongues and um, the spirit of discernment. And I have a plethora of testimonies and things that have happened that only is a God thing and I would love to share those things with you so I plan on doing that with you um in coming videos and uh anyway so but today we're going to talk about my most recent rapture video and I'm going to try to sum it up really fast my last video my husband called and I had to start it all over again so anyway um this recent rapture dream I had was um, in April, so it is April, uh, today is April 10, 2017. So this dream happened about five, six days ago. And the dream was um, that that day that the moon was a half moon, and that's in real life that happened. The moon was a half a half moon. And it was like kind of cradled down in the sky like that. So it wasn't like a half like that. Um, and then I went to bed and I had a dream that was so real that I saw the moon in the sky from my bedroom window as I was laying down, but it was it was a whole moon. So that scared me because I'd like jumped up like, oh my God, like how could he go from being cradled to being like a full moon? And it just, and then it was the color of an Advil pill. So if you've ever seen an Advil, it's kind of like brown coated. Um, so it was like that, it was brown coated. It was up against a very, very, very black background. So like the sky was extremely black and um, uh, with the sky and then also it was like as if someone was shining a flashlight on it to illuminate it because it couldn't illuminate um, having that flash that it had on it um, I mean I'm sorry having the um, not having uh, the illumination itself so anyway um, the uh, when I jumped up and I was and I like kind of gasped and I like screamed a little bit because I'm like oh my god like I know this moon was cradled when I went to sleep why is it whole so it went from, I'm standing in the window and it went from here, then it went half, and then it <laughs> went back to whole. And then when it did that, it kind of like went out and came back in. And I was like, <gasps> it was just like, what? And next thing I know, I was like back in my bed, but I was laying like straight, like on my back. And my husband was to the right of me. And then all of a sudden, I could feel the rapture happening. My body was being transformed. And it's a, it's a feeling I cannot ex. I can't describe it, but um, it felt like tingling. And I saw like what I remember as being like red and blue kind of balls. They were just like going up and down my body like. And from the inside, I just, this feeling was just <laughs> overwhelming. And it was beautiful. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. I'm being changed. And I wanted to know if my husband was being changed, but I knew I could, I just knew that he wasn't. And I, it was almost like Lot when his wife turned around the story of Lot in the Bible, who was Moses nephew. And his wife turned around when the angel, um, they were getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and they were, and she turned around and looked and she became a pillar of salt. I didn't want to turn to look at my husband. Like I didn't want to mess it up. I, I wanted to go. And, um, but I was still so curious. So what I did was I extended my hand out, my arm all the way out, and I was kind of like tapping him and I was calling his name and he wasn't responding. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's asleep. And then I just knew that he wasn't gonna go. Um, and, uh, but I was hitting him really hard and I started calling his name out loudly, but I wouldn't move. I didn't look at him. I just kept feeling the feeling and I was just like tapping him. 
And then he said, huh. And when he said, huh, I woke up. And when I woke up, it was so real that I thought my arm was still out extended toward him, but my arm was back inward. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, I just can't believe that happened. And I was excited for me, but um, the realization that my husband wasn't going was really, um, it bothered me, it bothered my spirit, it bothered my heart. I kept looking at him throughout the day, just thinking to myself, like, I need him to get it together because I need him to be in heaven with me. Like we have a mansion waiting for us and I want my husband to occupy it with me. Um, so anyway, I was telling him about it when he woke up and he was kind of like joking, like, oh, you were going to leave me. And I was like, really not having a fun time with his gesture. And I was like, not happy. And I was like, look, this is serious. I don't, you know, come on, like, Jesus is coming soon, and I, you can't play like this. Like, I need you to get it together. And kind of, like, was upset with him a little bit. And um, anyway, at the end of, like, the day, come the night, I had a really serious talk with him about how I was feeling and that I knew Jesus was coming, and I needed him to, come on, let's get it together. Like, whatever the battles are, what, what you know. Um, I became saved when I was six years old. And Jesus talked to me. He, 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 I can't, I can't describe. I can't really explain. I just, he put me, he put him in me. And, um, I used to talk about him in elementary school. Um, I went to school testifying about Jesus and, uh, I've had experiences. I've seen miracles. Um, I have the gift, like I said, speaking in tongues. I've seen things happen. My mom, she is a believer in uh, she told me recently that she used to pray and read her Bible when she was pregnant with me. And I know that God, that got into me. And so, um, it's really beautiful when I think about it because, um, so many times people pregnant with their children and they're doing certain things and they don't realize it's getting into the child but my mom she was doing the best thing that she could have absolutely been doing when she was pregnant with me and it allowed God to come into me as a little child and um yeah so um I've had a lot of experiences since a little girl and there's so many things I want to share with you all but I'll say at the beginning of the year, January last year, God put it in my heart so deeply that the rapture was going to come. And I want to share that with you all. And I will in um, videos coming up. But I wanted to get out this rapture dream because I feel that people really are, are clinging on to hope, clinging, clinging on to something they need to. It's, it's like God is He's putting a little like little nuggets out there of um, little hope, like through rapture dreams, through experiences, um, allowing us to have these experiences that keep us in remembrance of what's happening and helps keep our faith intact. So um, anyway, I knew that this could help somebody. And uh, this has been one of many rapture dreams that I've had. Um, and I don't even know where I was before I started talking about my mom. <laughs> but um. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, my husband, um, we talked and I, I said, Hey, you know, how about this? Let's, let's both rededicate our life to Christ. Let's, let's both pray the prayer of salvation again. And, um, I don't know if you all are seeing these messages that are coming up on my phone and I hope you're not because I see text messages coming up. <sighs> I hope you're not. Um, and, uh, cause I don't want to redo this video again, but, um, any, anyhow, um, uh, my husband, we both prayed the prayer of salvation again together. And I was like, hey, let's just start over, <laughs> you know, because I need you to be with me. I need you to go with me. And my husband, he felt the sincerity. He knew I was being like, I wasn't playing around. Plus he, he's been with me enough and long enough. We've been married 20, 21 years. So, um, and I say that because I always get, the, like, I'm like 21, 22, and my husband will be like, what? So, 21 years. Okay. So, um, we were married in, oh gosh, I'm not going to even go there because 
All right, let's just let's just keep it with this because if I get anything wrong, he is going to. All right, and most women remember these things, but me and numbers for some reason is like, and I don't even want to claim anything to myself. I'm very, very, very creative, but something about numbers when numbers come together, they just like. Uh, it's like my, my mind goes into speaking Japanese and I don't know what they're saying when they're speaking Japanese. So anyway, um, I can count money, but other things trying to, uh, yeah, I might have to get a pen and paper. Okay. But anyway, back to my husband and I, we prayed the prayer of salvation again. I felt so much better. I, we talked about my husband and some of the issues that he had and that he was going to work on him. I told him, obviously I'm not perfect and God is working on me. And so we just got to you know, just try to stay mindful that God is number one in our lives and we have to, we have to live a holy life. And that doesn't mean like you have to give up everything. And I'll share some of those things with you as well. Like some of the things that I've been through. Um, I, and I'll come back on and do another video maybe later today because I thought I had posted it. I thought I had posted these things on YouTube. Um, but what happened is on my Facebook page, I talk about a lot of my experiences. So I just failed to put them here. And so starting today, I'm going to start doing that so that you all can um, be edified so that it can give you a more so a nugget. It could help somebody. And um, if you have any questions, you could just leave them below. But um, I'm going to leave it at that. And um, if you don't know Christ and you would like to get to know him, then um, we can definitely pray the prayer of salvation. I'd love to right now. If um, And what that means is just that you're allowing Christ to come into your heart. You're saying, I want you to be my God. Like, I believe in you. I know that you died for me and that you love me. And you don't want anyone to perish because that's the word of God. He says that it's not his will that anyone should perish. But he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And that was Christ speaking. So um, if you feel that tug in your spirit, which is, um, it could be like a, a, a pulling up prodding uh just something that's telling you do it do it do it well let's do it here's your chance don't wait um and you don't have to be perfect to give your life to christ that's um, a myth most people will say i have to get my life right first um we don't come to christ with our life right he makes our life right we come where we are he's wonderful that way so he accept you however you are and then he'll change us from the inside out so allow him to do that and if you would, um, if, if you're feeling that, I'd love for you to join in this uh, prayer with me because that's all you have to do. And um, he'll give you the gift of eternal life. Um, and he wants to do that. <laughs> so um, you just pray this prayer with me. Just simply repeat after me and believe it in your heart and feel it. And just within your heart, know that you want to do this because your life is not your own and you want Christ to come live within it. And um, you want to be saved. You don't want to be left behind. You want to be with Christ when he comes back. And you don't want to die in your sins. Okay. Um, so here's, um, just repeat these words. Dear Heavenly Father, you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And you love me. <laughs> and put your hands on your heart. You love me. Pat your heart because he loves you. Okay. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. It is a gift that he's given and he's come that I will not be lost. I give my life to you, Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you took all my sins upon you at the cross. I believe that you rose again and that you're in heaven, seated at the right hand of God. I believe this by faith and I ask that you would forgive me for my sins. I believe that you've forgiven me for my sins. And I thank you for, for forgiving me for my sins. Come into my heart and live within me. I welcome you. And I thank you for being my God. And I thank you that I am now adopted into your family.
Amen. Hallelujah. So if you just prayed that prayer, guess what? You are in the family and it is wonderful. It's a wonderful place to be. Trust God. He loves you. The nagging is not um it's not just there. It's 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 God trying to connect with you. And if you say God doesn't talk to you and you feel that, he's talking to you right now. Okay. So um anyway, I'm going to come back on with more videos, maybe one today before I go to work and um trying to get keep you all inspired and give you some nuggets in. That's me, Key Ordinary Beauty 07. I am a servant of God working and trying to do his will and trying to um, be um, a, an example of what a kingdom representative is and just making sure that Christ is being seen and known through me and uh, the, the life I live for him. So that's that. Have a good, good, good afternoon. I pray God's blessings upon you all and I decree that you will have a blessed and wonderful day today. Talk to you all later. Bye.